building, Alexis Paul job skills demo open, silver medal winners, Adriana at Abbey architectural drawing, Kylie Cook job skills A, Paul Erdos welding and sculpture, welding sculpture, Stephanie Hewins job interview, Krista Holland aesthetics, Finn Whedon marine technology, bronze medal winners, Madison Collar cosmetology, Nicholas Keegan marine technology, Trey Lazowskis welding, Zachary Martinez welding sculpture, Joshua Pater automotive, Connor Sela technical drafting. Gold medal winners are eligible to compete in the national competition in June. Um, and there are some programs that did not compete this year. We also want to give a special thank you and farewell to Craig McKenzie at the end of this school year for his nine years of service to Charaho. We wish him the best in his new position at Kashmir and his dedication to the entire Charaho community. He will be greatly missed. Mm -hmm. I would also like to recommend our newly appointed as of July 1, uh, principal of the high school, Andrea Spaz, who will provide our district with the dynamic leadership she has exhibited in her 16 years career in Charaho. Congratulations, Andrea. Thank you all. And I'm so grateful for your support. It means the world to me. I'm very excited for this next step. Thank you for your backing. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. It's now time for the public forum session of the meeting. Um, this is for members of the public to bring forward issues that are not listed on the agenda. Um, I'm gonna ask that if you would like to speak at any point um, during tonight's meeting, you use your raise hand function, otherwise I won't see you. It's right at the bottom of your screen. Um, and then I will admit you into the meeting so you'll have an opportunity to talk. Um, I'm gonna ask that people try to limit your comments to two minutes uh, per comment so that everybody has an opportunity to offer their thoughts. So at this time, if anybody has something for a public forum, please raise your hand. All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you. Now we're on to policy. So um, for policies, we have academic requirements for graduation. This is a revision. Um, Andrea is here if there's any questions. I am recommending this be approved uh, with the revisions to the policy, which were really to align with the state regulations. Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. there, there, was a, there was a hand raised. I, I don't know if you, that you caught it in time. Okay. I did not. And there is no one who still had their hand raised. Yeah, I apologize. You know, I, I did give it an opportunity. So we'll see if we have an opportunity at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Superintendent Picard. So I recommend the approval of the academic requirements uh, for graduation policy revisions as they were revised to align to state regulations. So moved. Okay, moved by Mr. Luzon and seconded by Dr. Callahan. Any comments or questions on this agenda item? Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so I had a question uh, for either Gina or Andrea on this, on the, I, I went to the website and I looked over the diploma endorsements and seal. So I think I understand it, but I don't understand if they are all independent. Can you do all three? Can you do one or two? And the reason I ask is because the second section of this, it says by June 1 of the graduating year, student transcripts are reviewed to determine if they meet qualifications for the seal of biliteracy and the commissioner seal, not or and I just was curious about that. Mm -hmm. All three are absolutely eligible to any student um, as long as they meet the criteria. So uh, the the pathway endorsement, the biliteracy, as well as the commissioners, as long as students meet the criteria of, of all. Yeah. Okay, so that's not and it's and or, right? No, yep. we can. Okay, thank you. Look into that. Any other questions, comments? Okay, I'm gonna move the vote. All those in favor? Okay, that looks unanimous, thank you. Okay, uh, on to business, letter A. So the first item for business is the revised 2020-2021 school committee meeting schedule. 
I'm requesting the elimination of the school committee meeting on June 8th as the scheduling of senior events now being allowed by the state uh, conflicts with our rain date for the senior awards. And um, it, it would be our hope that the school committee and myself and uh, Assistant Lieutenant Daly would like to attend. We are working to try to accommodate all activities in very short amount of time. And we would like everyone to participate as, um, as I just explained. So there will be a next meeting would be June 22nd. We did look previous years and past years um, and there's only been one meeting in June in previous years and actually next year as well. So that was um, the feeling to remove that meeting so to avoid any conflicts in anyone's schedule. So moved. Okay, seconded by Ryan. Any comments or questions? No, seeing none, I will move the vote. All those in favor? Okay, that looks unanimous. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is our NEA ESP contract ratification. I recommend ratification of the 2020-2021 NEA ESP contract. Go ahead, Ryan. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Nobody? Okay. We'll move this vote as well. All those in favor. Okay, that looks unanimous. Thank you. So the next item for business is the review of yoga and mindfulness and the connection to the 2021 PE curriculum. This item was on the agenda at the request of Donna Chambers. I did add um, a letter from Assistant Superintendent Daly. So if there was a question about uh, our definitions for the district, that it was clear if that was needed. Thank you. Donna, do you have comments? Yeah. So I would like to um, propose that we revisit this consideration in the curriculum, in the physical education curriculum for several reasons. One of which and most important is how important it is today for our children to have this experience and this learning for um, the benefit of social and emotional learning. Um, we all received uh, a um, effective school solution memo that came out, newsletter that came out from the Society of Mindfulness. And in it, um, I would like to suggest that um, it defined mindfulness in terms of uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, who is, yes, in fact, a Buddhist monk, very well known, but um, he defined mindfulness as being aware of what is happening inside and around you in the present moment, paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non judgmental, in service of self. I would like to suggest that we want all of our children to be very aware of what is going around them in this day and age. This is part of their not just social and emotional well being, but also part of their safety, I think, to be aware of what's happening around them. And the more experience they get in this practice, I believe the better they are, uh, the better off they will be. The other thing is, is I am approaching this uh, from a secular point of view, non religious. Um, I think it's, it's very adaptable in both worlds for emotional and social intelligence. And also uh, in addition to the religious connotation, we do not have to approach this from a religious point of view, but the well-being of our children. Thank you. And I'd like to readdress it and reintroduce it back into the curriculum. Okay, um, Ryan. Thank, thanks, Chair. I I guess I'd like to get some clarification um, on this topic. Uh, when we voted on this previously, we did not remove yoga from the curriculum. We didn't remove mindfulness from the curriculum. We didn't remove anything from the curriculum at all. The vote was specifically to remove the word yoga from the curriculum. 
not eliminate any type of practice or inhibit anybody's uh, teaching of any of the PE curriculum. Now, I, I realize that that has caused some confusion in the community, and I, I definitely, um, you know, I'm glad that Donna, that you've called this so that we can address that. But I, I'm struggling a little bit because we can't make a motion to add back something in that we never removed, right? So when I look at the the, the curriculum that has been provided to us, I see that whereas before we had removed a superfluous word, um, we have now added two superfluous words back into it, or, and here's my question, I guess, for Jane, are we adding new content to the curriculum or is the flexible yoga specifically added to clarify, um, uh, you know, I guess what, uh, what, what we had done previously in terms of just removing the word yoga? Because when we talked about this last time, it wasn't an act that we removed it was a word that was not being used as part of the curriculum. Thank you. So can I get some clarity on that? So the word yoga was removed from the curriculum. Um, and then just based on this topic this evening, I showed where it was and just showed what it would look like if we replaced the word yoga with fitness yoga. But you're right, the, the physical moves and the practice were still part of the curriculum because they, they're they talked about in here, but just not that term. Um, and instead of using certain names and poses and you know um, vocabulary, the phys ed teachers were going to not use that terminology any longer. So this is more to address the question of this topic tonight and to better explain or define, you know, what that physical activity looks like. Uh, Proposed okay, for, sure. your, I, for your discussion. Mm -hmm. can, can I get a clarification on that, Chair? Sure. So my understanding previously, we only removed a descriptive word. It didn't change anything. It didn't prohibit anybody from saying the word yoga on campus or during instruction. It in no way banned uh, or changed anything about the PE curriculum or those who taught it, are you saying that it was taken as they were prohibited from using the word yoga, in which case adding fitness yoga back in like, now makes more sense to me, but I, I guess that wasn't my understanding of the vote previously. I can say, um, I think there was definitely confusion um, and an interpretation of whether we could use the word or not. So to clarify and tighten up the language, um, Jane had worked to ensure that we were clear about what it was we were exactly doing. So we were using the terminology and providing some clarifications if necessary, because there was a lot of confusion on whether they could or couldn't say it. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, Craig had his hand up first and then Donna. Craig. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I 100% agree with Ryan. I was, I voted along with this the last time because all we were doing is eliminating a word, not the act. But um, so I 100% agree with the fact that um, if we're going to make a motion, it should be just to reinstitute the the one word we eliminated. And so my only question now is, Donna, it was that your motion? Um. Chair, is it okay? Okay, yes. I, I can remove the the motion um, and I have no problem with that. I don't know if anybody even seconded it. Yeah, but we have no motion on the floor currently. There is no motion on the, okay. So my maybe, question, Donna, was that your motion? I, just a minute, Craig, okay. I believe the confusion, okay, and we heard from several PE teachers and teachers in the system that it was generally confusing. So whether we use the word or not use the word, whether it's in the physical um, PE curriculum or not, is, are we prohibiting teachers from discussing any kind of, or using a word like mindfulness or yoga with our students? because I believe that the teachers should have the freedom to be able to exhibit that, whether it's in the PE curriculum or not. Um, 
it's a current term. It's very appropriate for all of us. And I really don't want to um, stronghold the teachers into feeling uncomfortable even referring to those things. So anyhow, that's my feeling. I will remove the motion. I'm not making a motion. It doesn't matter, but I want to be, I want to be clear that teachers are allowed to use the terms with the children without feeling like they are overstepping their boundaries. Those are very trend, those are very important terms in today's world. Okay. Lisa. Um, I, I yield to Craig if that was a follow-up. No, I was gonna make a motion. Okay. Um, so Donna, thank you so much for, for bringing this to us this evening. I think it, this is timely and it needed to be done. Um, should you decide to make a motion um, to add these glossary terms into the curriculum, I support it fully. I think they're actually on the right track. And Jane, I think the work that you did to develop um, common understanding and common definitions um, is, is something that just needs to be part of our school committee practice more and more going forward. There's so much happening that the more we have shared language and shared definitions that pertain to our district specifically, the more productive that we can be and the more on the same page we can be. So I, I really think that this is all was, is going in the right direction. What I see on this page is a recommendation to add glossary items to a specific page. Why would we not? Well, I, there's really not a reason not to. Um, there's many reasons to do it. Um, besides what I just stated, in addition to that, regardless of whether or not the, the teachers now understand they can use the word yoga or not, it has been such a distraction. If you all have received the same amount of emails I have from our educators, the amount of time that teachers have spent crafting an email some of these emails were paragraphs and paragraphs. One of them was nearly a full essay. So rather than developing curriculum or thinking about lesson plans or preparing for the next day, our educators in the evening, because I see the timestamp on their emails, at night, after school, taking the time to reach out to us. So for that reason alone, they've been distracted from their work. So again, why not add a, a glossary? I, I, I can't see a reason not to do it. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, so yeah, I'm going to vote for anything in that direction, Donna. Um, and then lastly, I just wanna apologize because at the last meeting, um, I, I took a neutral stance. I abstained from this and I had was slightly off and a little tired from a battle that had happened just before. And I apologize to my constituents and the teachers. I should have fought this then I should have said what I'm saying now then. And so I'm sorry for all of the effort that you had to put into reaching out to us over this past month. Um, but I've said my piece now and, and, I, and I will vote in support of adding glossary terms to clarify the curriculum. And thank you, Donna. Thank you. David Stahl. So I, I wanted to clarify, and I hope when we, when we get a motion on this that we do clarify whether we're talking about just PE curriculum, because Donna's thrown in this should be PE curriculum and other curriculum, it should be everywhere. And also the PE curriculum, we were talking about the, the exercise or fitness yoga movements. And I believe that the, the word meditation was in there. And then the mindfulness term was for elsewhere in the curriculum, if I understood Jane's memos correctly. So we're sort of mixing two different things. And, and by the way, putting that term fitness yoga in there accomplishes much of what I wanted to accomplish with the discussion in the first place, um, you know, and, and including exercise and core strength training and movement and that sort of thing, but not the rest of the yoga practice. So um, I, I don't have so much issue with that, but I do have an issue with the mindfulness um, definition and practice still. So. I'm, I'm, and I'm not sure if we're combining those things intentionally or accidentally um, as we're discussing the PE curriculum, but it's been, but it's been added into this conversation. So the, the, the terms in the PE curriculum um, are, are not a real significant issue for me. Um, I don't think we need to have meditation in PE curriculum. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense to me, um, just generally speaking. But the mindfulness piece, um, you know, Donna said we can take a strictly secular approach and we, we don't have to have a spiritual definition to this. 
And she proceeded to give us a definition from a Buddhist monk that we're going to use to kind of frame our, our conversation. So again, that's still too muddy for me. Um, so anywhere that we're talking about mindfulness being in the curriculum, I will continue to vote no for that. Also, I like what we did last time with clarifying terms and, and not dancing on this line. Because again, I think, I think we are opening ourselves up um, to some further criticism or liability with religious practice. Um, so I'd still rather not have the terminology of yoga. Um, but again, the, the idea of doing the fitness yoga and, and what the teachers are talking about as Ryan stated, um, how the teachers are describing it is less of a concern. Um, I just wanna make sure that we're being really careful about that. And I'm also confused right now as to how mindfulness when it wasn't in Jane's notes for PE is getting brought into the PE conversation. So I'd like clarity when we have a motion on that. Sure, um, I will say that the agenda item is yoga and mindfulness and their connection to the PE curriculum. So we need to stay within that focus as it relates to PE curriculum um, for this particular agenda item. Uh, Linda? Thank you. Um, I, uh, when we voted the, the last meeting, I, um, I understood it that we just took, we took not just, but we took the word yoga out of it and we were keeping the strategies. I have no problem with um, putting it back in, in this context. And also um, I think the glossary is a, a great way for us to communicate commonly. So I have no problem with putting that back in um, at this time. Thank you. Donna, do you have, are you ready with a motion? I am. I am ready to make a motion that we, oh, um, I'll, I'll make a motion and then Bill, you can comment on it. Exactly. Um, okay. I would like to make a motion of taking Jane's definition and applying them to the curriculum, uh, to the PE curriculum um, for both mindfulness and yoga, fitness yoga. Okay. Yes. Seconded by Lisa. Okay. Discussion on the amendment, please. Mr. Day. Uh, my question was going to be, I don't know how the vote went the last time, but uh, um, if Donna did not vote in favor of this, uh, I think it is against uh, Robert's rules of order, her to bring this, even bring this up. So I don't have the, uh, the vote. She was, she was a poll. Could I not have the... Go ahead. I can shut up the rest of the meeting if, if I'm going to be interrupted. Oh. Okay. Please continue, Mr. Day. All I'm caught, or trying to calmly state that my understanding of Robert's Rules of Order that you have to be in the, in the affirmative to bring, bring something back up. That's my only question. Does anybody tell me that Donna voted for, for this in the affirmative the last time around? If she did, then she's perfectly legal to bring it up. Otherwise, I think it's it's the the more, her bringing it up is against Robert's Rules of Order. That's just my question. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just asking that question. So I disagree with your interpretation of Robert's Rules of Order on this particular agenda item. If someone has a clarifying comment, I would entertain that. Ryan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I agree with your assessment. I don't think that Donna is prohibited from bringing this to the committee. I think she would be prohibited from bringing it to the, to the committee in the same meeting. Um, but since it's it's been brought forward um, at a different meeting, I think that allows uh, for it to happen. That's my interpretation of it. So. Right, and I'm in agreement, which is why um, it's on tonight's agenda. Um, so Mr. Day, I apologize for interrupting you. That was rude of me. So I do apologize. I was trying to clarify for you. Um, whether you vote on this or not is certainly up to you. So we have two members, uh, Mr. Luzon. I can't hear you, Craig. I'm Thank in 100% I'm, I'm agreement with what um, Don is pushing here, but I think Bill's on to something. So I would just like Donna Siscavich, if she could just weigh in on 
this misunderstanding of Robert's rules? want to weigh on it because I think it's a legal issue. I don't know them well enough to say one way or the other whether she's she can or she can't. I am not an expert on Robert's rules. Open meetings I can, but I, I just don't know a lot about Robert's rules. So so my question also in, in conjunction with that is if Bill is right and we vote in favor of this or uh, this is Donna's motion, and does someone, can someone put a complaint in, in reference to us? From my understanding, she is looking at adding a glossary and some definitions to the PE curriculum, if that's my understanding of her motion. If that's what she's requesting to do, that is not what you voted on. You voted to remove okay. the word. That, that, that's good enough for vote me. To there was no glossary to be taken out. And, and clarification, these agendas are looked at prior I, to, so. I, I understand, I, I just don't want any pushback if, if we do something wrong. Sure. We've had plenty of that in the past. She did not vote, Donna did not vote against taking a glossary out of a PE curriculum. It was to take the word yoga out. Okay. Now her motion, is not to put the word yoga back in, but to take the definitions and apply them to the PE curriculum, both mindfulness and yoga. So she's applying definitions to the PE curriculum. That is not what was voted on and which was approved at the last uh, the meeting with the PE curriculum. This is a totally different motion. That's that's fa fair enough with me. You give me just. But I'm not an attorney. I would prefer if the, if there is a problem with it, somebody asked John. But my take on it is, the two different votes. Two different items. So there was no glossary that was voted on to be taken out. It was a word. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Did you have a comment, I t or did you take your hand down? Yeah, I, I was just going to simply say that if if the hold up is um, the person who makes the motion if Donna wants to withdraw it since I voted in favor previously I would be more than happy to make a motion to adopt the updated uh, curriculum as is. Thank you. So that Donna. was my comment is I can withdraw the motion just to be clear and someone else can make it if they choose to make it um, so that we are safe in this I don't see a problem with it, but if you would, if what it's your comfort level, Donna, whatever you're comfortable I, I with. I don't want it coming back on us. Okay, um, then why don't it you? It like some people feel very strongly about this, so. Apparently. Um, so I can withdraw the withdraw. motion if someone wants to reissue the motion. So okay. I will withdraw my motion. Okay, Lisa, can you withdraw your second, please? I withdraw my second. I'm going to leave my hand raised to reintroduce. Lisa. Okay. With thanks to Donna, I make a motion to adopt the glossary terms as presented by um, Ms. Daly in today's packet. And a second. Mr. Liguori. Is a second? Okay. I'm going to take a couple more comments, but we do have people patiently waiting in the audience. Mr. Stahl. I have a new confusion now. Uh, are we adopting a glossary of terms just for use when discussing the curriculum? Are we putting these words back in the curriculum, therefore making a change to the curriculum? So Lisa, that, it, that's confusing for me again. Okay. So Lisa, is the, is the intent to add fitness yoga or is it just to add the glossary terms? Um, the intent is to have the motion as was initially intended and presented. And so uh, whatever Donna had asked, I'm simply trying to repeat the same motion. So I believe that that would be adding the glossary of terms um, and introducing uh, fitness yoga in all places where we had removed yoga. And I see nods, so I believe that yes. So I am confirming on record that is my motion. Thank you. Okay. I'm clarifying because 
in the conversation, we said we were specifically not making a motion tonight to put the words back into the curriculum, but we're making a motion to put the words back in the curriculum. Yes. So that could be a little confusing and I'm still voting no. Okay, thank you. Okay, the, the, the only thing I wanna add is that the term now is fitness yoga. And I thought that Mr. Stahl, you had said you were fine with that term. So I think that they clarified that they were adding it fitness yoga, which had a different, I believe, meaning to you than just plain yoga. So yeah, what the discussion was, Donna, that it was not being added to the curriculum, that we were adopting a glossary of terms, but not that we were making revisions again to the curriculum. So that was that was my confusion. The other piece of that is that we're adding mindfulness, which I do object to back into the curriculum. If we're if we're including both of these terms, I have much less of a problem with fitness yoga. You are correct in that, Don. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to move to members of the public. I appreciate your patience. So I'm going to start with Brittany Swain. If you could, um, you can now unmute yourself and state the town of your residence, please. Thank you. Hello, um, I live in Richmond. You there, Brittany? Um, hold on one second, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay, we can hear you now. Okay, am I allowed to have a video or no? You should be, yes. All right, let me try. It's not letting me start a video for some reason. Um, well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how to change that for you, so I apologize. That's okay. Um, so I have a few things to share. If you wouldn't mind just giving me your time to just listen. Um, my name is Brittany Swain. Um, I am a yoga instructor. I teach adults and children, primarily children. I have worked very closely with Richmond Elementary School over the past few years and I am the owner of Peaceful Dragonfly Yoga. So um, I basically just wanted to give some clarification because I eat, sleep, and breathe yoga. So I think this will be a good discussion to sort of um, bring to light some of um, the issues that have been going on. Um, so first of all, I teach yoga. I worked in public schools for many years as a teacher assistant. And when I did, I, um, I saw a, a real need for some mental health support. So I went ahead and got certified and I started to teach in the school that I worked in in Coventry. And um, it was very well received in my school. It was a wonderful experience for me. And I took it upon myself to um, leave my job and pursue this full time because I feel so strongly about um, supporting the mental health of our kids today. So um, mindfulness is literally paying attention on purpose. So a good example of this is if you're doing the dishes and you are noticing the feeling of the water on your skin and you're noticing your grandmother's old platter and the design on it, this is simply what it means to be mindful. You are paying attention on purpose. Um, I don't think anyone would argue that we desperately need more mindfulness in our lives these days because there is so much going on all the time, especially for the kids. Um, so basically you're taking your attention and you're placing it on something over and over again. This is the practice of being mindful and meditation is actually a hyper-focused mindfulness practice. So when someone meditates, they're simply taking their attention and putting it on their breath over and over again. As soon as the mind wanders, you come back to the breath or someone might look at a candle and focus on the candle over and over again to bring their focus back to the candle. Um, so it's really just about paying attention. And um, these skills can be used with driving, with having good listening skills, listening to our peers, listening to our family members before we respond, um, active listening, full body awareness, full body listening, listening in schools, um, paying attention to what we're doing, paying attention to what other people are doing. So these practices, um, empathy, emotional awareness, there it's really something that, that for me as a yoga teacher, and I've, I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of training, um, 
it has nothing to do with religion in any way, shape or form. When I teach kids yoga, I'm simply giving kids the tools to, um, to, to practice this awareness and to practice being focused on one thing. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just giving me one more minute of your time, I'm sorry that I'm talking so much. Um, I have a little something I wrote that I would like to share with you all. Um, I wrote this a while ago for a little bit of an explanation. So the question is, why do I teach kids yoga? The response that I normally give, which would be a pretty textbook response is, creative movement creates space in the body. Breath is an amazing tool that can be used to quiet the mind and relax the nervous system. Mindful activities and crafts allow children to be creative, focused, and self-aware. Play is an important part of development. Children are able to make deeper connections through play, and there is no age limit. Yoga class is a safe place for kids to talk about important topics like kindness, gratitude, and self-love. Children are able to express themselves without judgment or expectations. I hold space for them to be who they are unapologetically. And here is the answer that I don't always give because it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more truthful. So this isn't something that I would put like in my marketing, but I would like to share it with you. I don't want our children to be afraid to live out loud. I want them to feel strong and empowered and to know that their voice matters. I want them to look at themselves and others with non-judgmental compassion. I want them to love themselves fully and be aware of self-talk. I want them to care about our planet and respect all living things. I want them to feel inspired and confident. I want them to dance like nobody is watching and sing for the world to hear. I want them to know that silliness has no age limit. I want them to know that they can be empathetic and know that it's okay and essential to feel things fully. I want them to have tools to cope with emotions and deal with challenging situations in a healthy way. I want them to know that they can be the calm inside of the storm around them. I want them to know that they don't need external resources to find joy and happiness and to ask for help when they need it. I don't want our children to be ashamed for who they are. I don't want them to treat other people poorly because they don't feel like they are enough. I don't want our babies to grow up into teenagers and young adults who use drugs, gambling, shopping, eating disorders, and social media to deal with unwanted feelings and stress. I don't want them to lose control because they can't find stability in their lives. I don't want our children to hate other people and I don't want them to hate the world. I don't want our children to feel so hopeless and so out of control that they commit suicide. When children spend time in a yoga class, my hope is that they feel free, perfect, whole, and that they gather tools that they can use throughout their lives. I hope they leave with a sense of self and the confidence to conquer the world one day at a time. That is my whole thing. I knew I know it was a lot, but I spent a lot of time um, thinking about this and writing about it. Um, and I just wanted to clarify what it feels like to teach kids yoga, because that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel spiritual. It doesn't feel like Buddhism. It feels like we are trying to lift these kids in this crazy world and give them a sense of security, a sense of self, confidence, and, and yoga can't be separated. There is no physical yoga. If I'm going to be completely honest here, there's no physical yoga and then other yoga. It doesn't work that way. Mindfulness, meditation, and yoga are all part of the same process. And it takes all of those things to, to give these kids, when you're in a yoga pose, the whole point of being in a yoga pose is to be mindful of your body. Notice where you're feeling it. Be aware of what you're saying to yourself when you're in that pose. So it all ties in together. And I hope that this just gave a sort of a better definition for everybody to understand more what it feels like to teach kids yoga, because it's so important, so, so important. And I hope that, um, I hope that people start to change their minds a little bit and open up. And I'm happy to talk to anybody that wants to understand a little bit better. Um, and thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your comments very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, Kimberly Daigle. You should be able to unmute now. 
I am. As Brittany, I do not see a camera, so I apologize and we'll leave it at that. Um, I'm a phys ed teacher at Richmond Elementary. So I had been one of the teachers who spoke with you all at the last meeting where this had really come up and I applaud you and thank you so much for taking the time to revisit this. Clarification is key and I think between administration as well as teachers that was very much true the question as to what we were able to teach versus what we were able to say and how we're able to go about it. However, um, Mr. Stahl had questioned how mindfulness really comes into play in the phys ed curriculum. And it may not be written. However, it is one of those underlying unmistakable components that is utilized in every aspect of phys ed. It's how children listen. It's how they adhere to directions. It's a processing piece. It's understanding, it's being respectful of each other. It's, it's allowing another person the opportunity to say or ask a question that they need to speak to. Um, it's being respectful truly of another individual's abilities as well as lifting another child up because one student has something over another one, whether it is in what they're capable of or their perception of different things. Mindfulness truly, truly comes into play in the phys ed curriculum in all those different ways, but more than anything, it's in respect and it's being conscientious of their body, cogniz cognizant of where they are, what they're doing, as well as if you wanna technically go into skill, it's how they perform a skill. It's how the, mo the motion is being executed for lack of better terms, but it's so much more and it truly does affect every aspect of what they do. So it's, it's not just being present in an athletic skill, it's being aware of who they are, what they're saying, how they're responding, how they take what somebody else says and how they recognize who they are as people and how they treat each other. So I hope that gives you a little bit of you know, better clarification as to how we utilize it. As far as yoga, I appreciate the fitness yoga, the yoga. As I said previously, yoga hits almost every component there is, whether it's strength, flexibility, balance, it, it really does, it, it's an attestment to all the different areas that kids enjoy. Not everybody is athletic. Not everybody is outgoing, but it does present an opportunity for everybody to be successful. And mindfulness, I, I'll just say this, I, I had seen what was proposed and I apologize, mindfulness-based stress reduction. I appreciate that thought. However, kids, especially elementary kids are simple. Keeping it simple, they understand the word mindfulness. If we wanna put that in a glossary of terms, I appreciate that and I'm willing to do anything to be able to keep what's important to us. However, as I stated, kids are simple. I've become very simple over the years that I've been with them. And I think a modest expression of what they're capable of and the reasons why are really what's going to resonate with them. So I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Right. Seeing no other hands, are there any final comments from the committee? Oh, I apologize. I've got one more hand from the public. Holly Hopkins, if you could state your town, um, you should be permitted to talk now. Hi, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, I just, I thought I would balance things out a little bit. Oh, and I'm in Hopkinton, by the way. Um, I wanted to back up. Dave Stahl for a moment and just remind the committee that there are certain things about yoga, such as the guided imagery that do concern parents and other members of our community. And I think we should be respectful of each other in those kind of things. Um, so I guess, uh, more of a religious um, 
I'm, I'm at a loss for words. The religious community, I think, would have a much harder time getting over the guided imagery with the meditation aspect of the yoga. Um, there's a couple other little issues that it provides a very low cardio workout. I'm sure that could be debated because I've done yoga poses myself. But for kids, it depends on what the teacher is teaching. And the gym teacher at Richmond would be able to expound upon that much more than I would. Uh, but my concern was that it doesn't foster teamwork. And I think our kids need a little more teamwork. Um, is there anybody who can describe to me something in the yoga field or that would be taught that gives kids teamwork while they're in physical education? And I just wanted to ask a couple of those questions. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, looks like uh, Ryan, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I uh, just wanted to uh, comment that uh, since we never removed yoga from the curriculum and the motion now is just to add some glossary of terms and so on, mm -hmm. um, we're not adding anything back in in terms of structure. I'm I'm very comfortable with just proceeding forward in the affirmative of the motion. Um, so I just put that out there. I, I think it's I think it's good. So thank you all. I'll be voting in favor of this. Thank you. I've given everybody um, in the public an opportunity to speak at least once. So I think unless there are other comments from the committee, I'd like to move the question. Any further comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion. Okay. And those um, opposed? Mr. Stahl? And abstentions? Mr. Day? Okay, thank you. And now we're on to consent agenda. Chair? Yes. We had some people absent from the last one. So if we could pull A1 and A2. Sure. I have a motion to move the remainder. I will do that if I was just waiting to see if anybody wanted anything else pulled. Uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to uh, move the remainder. But before I do, I would like to recognize Kay donations, a donation of $1,000 from Gail Anderson of San Diego, San Diego, California, for the establishment of the Horatio S. and Gloria L. Stanton Memorial Scholarship to a deserving Cheriho student. Thank you. I have a second. Mr. Callian, all those in favor of moving the balance of the consent agenda? Thank you. That looks unanimous to me. Madam Chair? Yes. At this time, we'd like to make a motion to approve A1, the executive session minutes of April 13th, 2021, which was approval of executive session minutes of March 23rd, 2021, and ESP MO, uh, memorandum of understanding of, of, yes, of understand, no, of agreement minutes not sealed. I have a second. Dr. Callahan, those in favor? Okay. Any abstentions? No abstentions? Anyone voting no? Okay, that was unanimous. Point of order, Chair? Yeah. But just a small thing, you have to give an opportunity for discussion oh, sure. before moving to it. Thank you. Was that it? Yeah. Okay, Madam Chair, make a motion for A2, the regular session minutes of April 13th, 2021. Second by Ryan. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Anyone abstaining? Anyone voting no? 
Okay, that looks unanimous as well. Thank you. Ready to move on to reports? I think so. Okay, great. So we have some subcommittee reports. Health and Wellness Subcommittee will be holding a virtual meeting on Tuesday, May 18th, 2021 at 4 p.m. The agenda and virtual meeting link will be on the district's website. We also are hosting a special education advisory committee uh, virtual meeting on Thursday, May 13th at 6 p.m. The agenda and virtual meeting link are also on the district's website. The anti-racism task force met on May 5th, 2021 and closes a copy of their approved minutes of April 7th. And they have another meeting coming up on May 18th at 7 p.m. as well. That um, agenda and link will be found on the district website. For my report, just an update on spring events. Um, we have a very detailed spring events handbook as well as templates that our school teams would need to complete hosting any events. We definitely appreciate our parents and our families understanding and grace as we mitigate risk and work very hard to bring back in-person events. Um, they're not easy, but we are going to work very, very hard to make them enjoyable and occasions that our students will have memories. So right now, I think as many as you, of you know, while our, always our biggest event is graduation because that's why we're all here from pre-K when we get them, it's about graduation. So that's definitely uh, one um, that we hope you all were able to attend. But we've also been working on not only bringing back the equipment for our uh, school committee meetings, the executive order ends in May, which uh, our goal is to have the equipment ready for graduation and hopefully be able to move our school committee meetings in that direction as well once the equipment's all ready and in and set up and um, have it, has the trial run. But we also will be planning um, elementary events as, as well as awards night in, in both virtual and in person format. So um, any questions or comments uh, from families who have concerns about events should definitely reach out to principals, but I can tell you they are working very, very hard to do their best to um, try and make the events as enjoyable as possible. But I do need uh, to the committee to know that coming in our next meeting as the, the mask wearing gets a little um, shifting and changing and the vaccinations come into play and things like that. We want to make sure that we have the ability to be uh, flexible and pivot when necessary, but to also ensure that we are mindful of that. We still have risk and we want to make sure that our, our families are safe when they do attend our events. It's not our goal to put anybody at risk, but we will still have to limit um, based on venue, based on site, the number of guests. So we hope that parents understand that while we would love to accommodate every single family member that needs to attend. Really, it's about size. It's about the venue. It's about the number of people that can attend. And until we know all of that information, it would be impossible for us to make accommodations um, because these events aren't easy and they have to be approved prior um, via our templates to ensure that we are following protocols. So, but we're excited because it's in-person events and we didn't have those last year and we, we hope that we can bring them back and they may look different and we hope our families enjoy them and our communities enjoy them. We have upcoming events. We have state PD for all staff. So it's an asynchronous learning day for our students on Monday. Secondary progress reports are issued on May 21st for the fourth quarter. And um, that's it for me. Oh, one more thing about kindergarten registration, it's still up and running. And we are definitely still where we thought we would be at this time. But as you know, um, Ashway is around 18 pre-registered, Charlestown around 39, Hope Valley is around 20, and Richmond's around 45. But uh, like I said, as you all know, people will register for kindergarten up to the first day of school. So um, we will just keep an eye on that. And uh, we have a lot of our in-person learners um, back in school, especially at our elementary level. We are down where um, Ashway only has 17 distance learners remaining, Charlestown 12, Hope Valley 11, Richmond 19. The middle school has 125 and they have 772 in person. The high school has the most at 245 with 862 in person. So that's just a little synopsis of where we are right now. Happy to put those numbers in our, my update to all of you this Friday. Thank you. Okay, school committee request for future agenda items or legal opinions. Anybody have anything? Mr. Stahl? 
I'd like to for us to add to the agenda um, a discussion about consistency in prioritizing agenda items and consistency in our discussions. Okay. Time, timing of our discussions during board meetings, committee meetings. Do you mean timing? How, what do you mean timing? Like when they're on? The consistency of timing and format in our discussions. For example, tonight we said we were specifically sticking with two minutes for public comments. We had one that went for seven and a half. Uh, we need to be consistent here. Okay, thank you. Um, so Mr. Day? The other item was for agenda items for, for bringing them in the order in which they are requested. Okay. Mr. Day, you had your hand raised. Uh, yes, I have a two request specifically for the May 25th meeting because I think uh, they both uh, need to be uh, answered in a, in a very timely manner. Uh, the first one is uh, about a year ago, I did a uh, safety check around Richmond School and I found a couple windows there that the windowsills, uh, I, I took, I measured one the other day. Uh, <clears throat> the windowsill is a uh, four foot. Well, 15 feet of that is completely rotted out on both ends of the windowsill and water and snow and everything have been getting down in there. And I was told that these windows are gonna be addressed when we fix the cupola at the top of the Richmond school. Well, I, this is not satisfactory to me. It should not be satisfactory to any of the people that put money into this district. I don't know who made this decision and why it was made. But when you got a windowsill that, like I said, there's only 33 inches of it left. I mean, I don't know what's going down in there. Obviously in the winter time, snow and, and stuff could freeze and it could impact the integrity of the brick between the cement block and the brick and it costs us more money. And this was brought to attention a year ago and, and hasn't been addressed. There are numerous windows over there that are almost in the bat, same condition there. They haven't been painted in so many years that they, they just, just you touch them and the water oozes out of them. So I, I, I really feel that I need to know on the 25th what somebody is going to do about fixing the most serious windows over there instead of telling me we're going to wait till we fix the cupola on the, on the roof to address this. This has been going on for too long of a time. This isn't the way we've been taking care of maintenance in this district. For a number of years, we see problems, we fix them. We don't turn around and tell somebody on a school committee that they're gonna be addressed at a future time, not even giving me a, a time frame. So I want a time frame on when this is gonna happen. Okay. And the second thing is, <clears throat> I also believe that I would like to know, and maybe some other committee members feel the same way, that <clears throat> what plans and, and how quickly can we shift into in-person learning when the state gives us permission to do this, because I'm a little frustrated with some of these people that are hiding behind uh, their uh, whatever they're doing at home and, and not participating and just uh, creating a, a ill will, I should say, in my opinion. So I think I think this this we should have a plan going forward, and and I think we should be ready to implement it. Or, or reject it. Uh, so I'd like to know what what plans uh, have been uh, formulated and, and when we can uh, know that we'd be ready to implement them when the state gives us permission to do that. I'm sorry for for clarification purposes, Mr. Day. Are you talking about in person school, or are you talking about in person school committee meetings? School committee. We've been doing in person learning okay. school for a whole year. We're probably one of the few. And that's another. Maybe that brings that brings another point up, Catherine. Maybe it'd be interesting if the superintendent would give us and 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 the rest of the state an idea of how many schools are doing what Chero is doing. I think we're probably one of one or two, maybe. And I don't think we get credit enough for that. We 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 get you go on TV and oh, so such and such a school is doing in person learning now. There was a piece in the Wesley Sun the other night about them going to in person, uh, not full in person learning, which. 
I think a lot of people believe that they were, were doing that all along and they weren't. So I think we, we need to pat ourselves on the back in, in that respect. That, that would be nice, nice for <clears throat> the taxpayers to know that we're one, we've been out in front of that all along and, and Gina and the rest of the staff have been doing a tr tremendous job over there. And I, I think it's, that's another thing that maybe uh, would not be bad to toot our own horn on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Dave, are you finished or your hand's still up? Just just raised my hand. I just wanted to, okay. to note that Mr. Day asked for a discussion on uh, in-person school committee meetings. I asked for that to be on a future agenda uh, two meetings ago, and we have not heard about it yet. So that's one of the things that I'm waiting for. And Bill, I've already asked for that and we're not getting an answer. So thank well, you for asking again, uh, but I'd like to see from. that on the agenda, please. Well, that's why I just specifically asked for the 25th. I'm, I'm waiting on that one as well. Okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Madam Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. motion to adjourn. Second, great. All right, all those in favor. Right, folks. Thank you. Was it Ryan who seconded? It was a tie between Ryan and Gary, but you can give it to her. Give it to we'll Gary. Give it to both of them. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Good night, everyone.